Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We begin our Sundance Shorts coverage right now with the film Ultraviolet and director Mark Johnson. Mark, how are you doing today? Great. Good morning. How Good are morning. you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Thanks for coming in. Thank How's you. How's your Sundance experience been? It's been amazing, really. I mean, people are just awesome with me and very supportive, in particular the programmers. They're just awesome. So many directors. To it's great to kind of yeah. network and meet a lot of other people in the field and in the craft as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. So this is your second film at Sundance. Yeah, I feel I've, I'm very lucky about that, yeah. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> on that. The second film is called Ultraviolet. It's kind of um, an, an experimental art piece, I could say. Yes. Can you kind of explain it to me? Yeah, basically that's a film that um, starts where this woman dreams that she's a scorpion and when she wakes up she's not clear whether she's herself or whether she's now a scorpion dreaming she's human. So that's this little bit of a loop story where I explore sort of interspecies sociability okay. where human and other species are considered equal. That's really interesting and, it, and visually it makes more sense if, we, if you see it. So we have a little <laughs> clip right now. Let's take a look at that. The color palette that you chose for this <laughs> film is really interesting. Can you tell me what was the purpose behind those in very intense, vivid colors? Obviously, the film's title is Ultraviolet, but w what was the purpose of those? What, what were you trying yeah, to Yeah, I was reading a scientific article about why scorpions glow in the dark under ultraviolet lights, and that was it. And then I was like, oh, that's a great image to work with. And then I started to contact my DOP, and we worked together on that. And obviously ultraviolet color is very important. It's also the color that we can't see. It's like near the, you know, there is infrared and inf ultraviolet. We're not supposed to see those things, while scorpions can, for example. Okay. So that was also the, my interest in, in those elements. So and it's kind of seeing another side that you wouldn't normally see before. It kind of adds to the blurriness of am I the human or am I the scorpion? Exactly. So where was the inspiration for the story? Where, where did you...? Well, the story is inspired by a Chinese poem from the 3rd century BC by Zanzi. And so I took it from here, and then after the scientific article came in, and I just worked, elaborated on that. And uh, of course, the actress is very important. Her name is Kanchana Katkwe, and she's from Bangkok. And we work together, and she does that on an everyday basis, so I needed someone that was comfortable with scorpions, and uh, she was just fantastic with it. Was, so she... She wor she's worked with scorpions in the past, is that? Is yeah, that, she does wow. that So she was very day. comfortable with the scorpion on yeah. her and kind of crawling around her mouth. I mean, it gets so close to the point where it's almost yeah. crawling into her mouth. Yeah, yeah well, it does happen, actually, at oh, the end wow. of the film. It entered back in into the mouth. Yeah. Wow, that's As a home, Yes, basically. I see it. So it's kind of the merging of the two species, which yeah, is very right. interesting. Did you film, so this production, it was filmed in Thailand? In Bangkok, In yes. Bangkok, yeah. very nice. <laughs> and why, why Bangkok? Why Thailand? The, that's the only actress that could perform, basically. Okay. This film, who is comfortable yeah, enough to have a scorpion, yeah. Calling. So, and she will. She holds many ro world records for holding scorpion in her mouth for three minutes, for example, wow. this type of thing. So, she was very kind, and uh, it was amazing so to work with her. So she was perf perfect for the role. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the film. Obviously, it's already shown here at Sundance, as we're yeah. on the closing days. Um, where did it show, and where can people see it now? Well, maybe soon in other festival. It's going to go to Brazil in the Museum of Modern Art in February. And um, I'm also negotiating with Amazon to put it on view, view, video on demand and different streaming platforms, maybe Nowness as well. Oh, excellent. So we'll, we'll see we'll where see. it goes next. But, uh, and what's next for you, Mark? Do, what projects are you working on? I'm working on an episodic program, a uh, documentary, 12 episodes, okay. about human diversity and uh, cultural, uh, intangible cultural heritage of the humanities. I'm also working on a feature documentary and I'm also working on a short film, which is going to be a narrative, but that's under development, so those things take time. Wow, so you have a ton of free time, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you're very, very busy, but obviously... Are you, are you an architect as well? Is that something... Yeah, I was trained as an architect Trained as an architect. As well, yeah. So does that come into play into your film when you... When oh, yeah, yeah, definitely films? about landscapes. I'm always interested in urbanism and how human beings live within those societies, and uh, so that's definitely something important for me, yeah. 
Well, this film is very interesting. I can't <laughs> wait to see the full thing of it, the full feature. Um, it was great work, and I think the metaphors and the symbolism in it is, is really awesome. Thank you very great much. Great job on that, absolutely. Thank you. Congratulations again on making it to Sundance. I'm <laughs> sure we'll you. see you next year. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks again, Mark. Thanks. We'll be right back with much more on the Mountain Morning Show with more Sundance coverage, so don't go anywhere.